Welcome back, guys. My name is Leland, bringing you another TA of the G R T. We're also going to be talking about Orchid, New Cipher, and Numerare, along with Bitcoin throughout this entire video. And if that sounds good to you, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you are new. You're going to be getting really excited throughout this entire video. You're going to understand where we are within the markets and where we are going to be going. But before we get started, if you want to feel more comfortable and more confident within your trades, go buy this book. This book has all my favorite indicators, patterns, charts to help you with your TA and becoming more successful. Link is down below for the book. If you guys are thinking that GRT is looking bearish right now, I want to go ahead and show you why I think we're probably going to be at one of the lowest points within GRT ever. I really do think these are probably going to be the cheapest GRTs that you're going to be able to get because the next few weeks after this is going to be absolutely insane. And, le and let me show you what I'm talking about. So currently, GRT is in a descending wedge, a descending wedge pattern, which is a very bullish pattern. Every time we see this pattern, we automatically start getting bullish. And paired with the MACD, what you want to see when you have a descending wedge like this, when you have the resistance and then the support, resistance, support, resistance, support, and it, we're kind of coiling up in here and we're getting towards the end of this. We're getting towards the end of this descending wedge. And typically when you see these kind of things and you know it's a descending wedge is when you have negative momentum moving to the upside on your MACD. We're looking at a daily chart right now, looking at a daily chart. And you can see we've talked about this multiple times. We're about to get our cross over here. This is very bullish. And I want to show you an example. I want to show you an example with Bitcoin. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to move my Move my little camera over here so I can show you this, illustrate this a little bit better for you. So this is Bitcoin back in June of 2020. Bitcoin put in a very similar pattern, a very similar uh, indication of what was going to be happening. And the last time I saw this with Bitcoin, I loaded up like crazy. This was the, the point where I started putting as much money as I could into Bitcoin because this was signaling that we were going to be taking off. And as you can see, and I'm going to move forward for you here, but Bitcoin was in this falling wedge, resistance, support, resistance, support, and it looks very much like a GRT right now. But if we go ahead and, well, actually, before we do that, look how we have the very, very similar uh, uh, moving momentum or momentum moving to the upside with our with our oscillators, right? You see how the MACD looks like that? We'll come over here. MACD looking very much the same. Falling wedge looking very much the same on Bitcoin. Well, what happened after that? That's what that's what you want to see. After that, you can see within this falling wedge, we're going along. We're going along. We started testing that resistance. Started testing that resistance over here, and then eventually, when we broke through on that day right there. You can see the how that played out. You can see how that negative momentum moving to the upside was suggesting that we were going to be breaking out of this resistance with this candle right here. And after that, people became very bullish about Bitcoin. You can see how much higher we started moving out of that formation. That was a very bullish formation. We followed it up with a massive, massive green histogram on our MACD, and we started to be going much higher. But Bitcoin needed that consolidation. Bitcoin needed to have that consolidation over here, and you can see how it had a really massive ride up, right? Bitcoin had this massive move to the upside, and we started consolidating, making that descending wedge, having that net negative momentum on the MACD, it's, it was looking really bullish at that time. This is where I started picking up more and more Bitcoin at that time. Very bullish, very bullish. You can see very one of the same things is happening, very same things that are happening on GRT over here, it's massively bullish. I know a lot of you are probably freaking out and like, man, the prices just keep going down now. No, no. Look at this, guys. Massive run up, looking just like Bitcoin in our consolidation pattern over here. I am expecting for GRT to be breaking out of this and for us to be going up and hitting our $4 target like we talked about in the past. That is still in play. That is very much still in play, but we're not stopping there. That's not, we're not stopping there. We're going to be going much higher, much higher after that. So, when we have a breakout, and we're not even going to go over fibs because really this is what we need to be focusing on. When we have our breakout over here and we come back and we test and get that confirmation, that right there for me is where I'm going to be picking up more GRT. That is where I'm going to be picking it up. 
it's looking beautiful, looking really be be uh, really beautiful. If you're liking this content, hit that like button. And if you're new, hit that subscribe button because we have way more coins that we have to talk about. We're going to be moving over to OXT, Orchid, looking amazing, looking really good. You guys know that we have this huge run up uh, within the past few days, past week or so from this bottom that we were at over here all the way to the top. We went up 117% and that was from March 4th up until now. So it didn't take that long for that to play out. As you can see, we broke through the 618 and 786 right here, but it's we didn't get that confirmation at the 618. We never came back down and tested the 618 right here, which is about uh, 65 cents, about 65 cents. So we blew past it and we did we disrespected all of these other levels. We came up, we hit the golden mean ratio up here. Let me just move this down. We hit the golden mean ratio. That was resistance very well. It should, it should. But we've come back down and, we, and we've tested the 618, not only testing the 618, but we also ran into the 21 EMA as well. That was an area that we needed to come back and test for support. I do believe that OXT is going to be getting this bounce right here and be moving to the upside. An area that we need to break through between the 618 and 786 over here is going to be 71 cents. Once you get above 71 cents, you test it as support then we can continue and we're going to be breaking new all-time highs where we have talked about previously in the last video expect a double expect a double and you can't even see it i have to drag it out even more i have to drag it out even more expect to double after we break all-time highs which was the previous all-time high back here which is about 80 cents almost 80 cents so a dollar 60 is where i'm going to be looking to be going and we'll be going above the 2618 these are very primed conditions, very primed conditions, and it, it's looking beautiful. It really is. It's looking absolutely beautiful. So um, you can see right now on our four hour, or this on a six hour, actually, I bet we could even go to a, a six or a four hour. I like to chart on the four hour. On the four hour chart, you can see that we are having, we're, we're putting in hidden bullish divergence, hidden bullish divergence right here. The indications are telling us when we get our cross down here or a little bit before the cross price action is going to be starting to move up. As we talked about over here, we got our bounce at 65 cents. That was on the daily chart, hit that 21 EMA and we're starting to get the bounce right now. So I'm expecting that to be playing out. Hidden bullish divergence, negative momentum moving to the downside as price action is moving up. We're bullish. We're bullish. Uh, you can get into a position today and be very happy within the next few weeks, few months. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just providing the data and it's looking really good. Looking very good for OXT. Not a whole lot to talk about other than trying to get above that 71 cents right there. Once you get above 71 cents, like we talked about, get that retest and we're going to be taking off. Very cut and dry. Very cut and dry. Let's go take a look at Numerare. Numerare right now is sitting right below the $50 area. That was an area of support right there. You can see how it was resistance back here as well. Resistance, resistance, resistance. It's taking a bit of a cool off, but nevertheless, we've been um, kind of like on this overbought or oversold area for quite some time, excuse me. And we're looking for a move to the upside. I'm really going to be looking for that move to the upside, especially with the same thing. On the four-hour chart, we're looking at hidden bullish divergence, negative momentum moving to the downside. As price action is moving up, that's very bullish. Very bullish, especially because we're about to get this four-hour cross down here. I'm hoping for Numerare, when once we... Once we get that confirmation, we start moving up on the we move green on the histogram. We start getting our cross down here that the price is going to start moving back up. And my goal is I want to get above that 21 EMA. Let's get above that 21 EMA, which is going to be coinciding with the 618 as well, which is going to be about 50 bucks. 49 to 50 bucks is where I'm going to be looking to where we get that confirmation. We need to get back up into the 618 and 786. I do believe that's going to happen. You can see we caught really, really good support down here at the $44 area. You can see in the past that it has been resistance, 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 re resistance. When we broke out of that resistance, we never came back for the retest. And that's all we're doing right now. That's all we're doing is we're coming back to get that retest right there before we can start continuing more to the upside. We were overbought. Overbought. When it came over here and it broke all-time highs at $66, we were overbought like crazy. We were taking a bit of a consolidation, and now we're starting to shift our momentum to the upside. You can see that with the RSI. You can already see that with the MACD as well. In our 12 and 26-day moving average, we're starting to move to the upside, looking really good. That was the wrong one that I clicked on. Get rid of the RSI. You can see this is our stochastic RSI, and are we still over here? Whoops. Let's move my camera back down over there. Uh, hopefully I didn't mess up anything in the video. <laughs> My bad. So 
you can see our momentum is already starting to shift. We've been below the 20 on the stochastic RSI for quite some time, and now we are having that movement to the upside. I think that's going to be coinciding with the MACD, the RSI, and the price action as well, which I think we've hit a bottom. I really do think we've hit a bottom over here on Numerare, and we're going to be starting to move to the upside. Like I said, get above 50 bucks, get above $56 over here, and we're going to be starting to look really good. Those are my targets that I'm going to be looking for in the future. It's not if, it's when that happens. Very bullish. Very bullish on that. All right. Let's move on over to New Cypher. New Cypher right now sitting about that 60 cent area. Uh, we ran into that support. Let me see. I haven't looked at New Cypher. Uh, we're still looking really good. We're still looking really good, and I haven't even really looked at any indicators. Let's take it over to a daily right now. We're still above, and you can actually move this up just a tad bit, about right there. We're still riding this support, and we've run into the support, and what? And this is a very strong support, by the way. Very strong support. If, if New Cypher breaks out of this support over here, not going to be feeling too good about it. I'm not going to be feeling too good about it. You can see that our, mom our momentum started to shift. We're starting to make this W formation. I expect that when we start moving into that support more and more, that's going to start pushing the price up. And the current area that we need to be looking for for new ciphers, we need to get above that 68 cent area. You can see that that was support all throughout back here, all throughout there. And then we came over here and we made it into a resistance. So that's going to be a hard area of resistance that I think we need to get above. Nevertheless, I do think that eventually we'll start running into the support line over here, this purple line, and that's going to be forcing us to be, to be moving higher. And the reason why I say that is because We've been on the low low for quite some time. We've been and we're and we're increasing our momentum. You can see that with the histogram. We're about to have our cross over here. It's taken some time. Bitcoin has been having some of its dips. It took a 14% dip the other day, which did hinder a lot of these altcoins. But that's completely normal. Uh, and I'm going to go show you uh, a little bit. Or I'm going to show you right after this chart. We're going to go take a look at Bitcoin and 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 kind of predict maybe what might be happening with that coin. So. I'm bullish. I'm still bullish on New Cypher, although it's been very boring. I know a lot of you have been holding on to this coin for quite some time, but you need to remember from the bottom down here all the way to the top, we've pumped more than 600%. So taking a little bit of a consolidation is not out of the order. It is completely fine. Take this consolidation. Let's run into this support line that we had running back all the way over here into the beginning of January. I believe that this is going to start forcing the price to be moving up mixed in with the MACD with the negative momentum and the cross that we're about to have down here. I believe it's time. I really do believe it's time for that to happen. We need to be patient. We need to be patient. All the indicators are telling us right now that we are bullish and we're not looking for any movements to the downside. That is unless Bitcoin takes a dump, which we're going to be going to take a look at right now. But before we do that, let's talk about the areas that we need to get get above just a recap 68 cents is going to be an area that we need to get above once we get above 68 cents you can see the next area of resistance is going to be 77 cents and then 80 cents after that let's move into the support let's move up to the upside and our goal right now is to get back up to 91 cents i think once we start having this movement to the upside and we can prove that we can get back up to this 91 cents i believe that we have blown through all of the hard resistances going all the way up to 786 and everything after that is going to be butter and we're going to be taking off so still looking good still looking really good not a whole bunch of new data that's why i like to wait a couple of days before i give you guys an update because i need more data I need more data that's going to be suggesting where possibly where we could be going. And uh, we're still being held down. Still being held down by that 21 EMA. Get above that. Get above that and we're going to be looking pretty good. Nevertheless, I'm still bullish. Still bullish. Bitcoin. Bitcoin right now, we were talking about Bitcoin being kind of bearish. And the reason why we were talking about Bitcoin being kind of bearish was because if we went ahead and took a look at our daily on our histogram on our MACD, we have this hidden bearish divergence. We have negative momentum moving to the downside as price action is moving up. Typically, you don't want to see that within a market. That's that's an indication that we're going to be having a correction, some kind of movement to the downside. Not only were we showing that on the MACD, but we were also showing that on the RSI as well, um, coming all the way back over here to the beginning of January. But we are in a bull market. We are in an uptrend, and Bitcoin likes to take us all by surprise and you can see that we're just now getting this cross over here on our daily on our stochastic rsi which has been below the 20 and every time we've been below the 20 in the past we've had moves to the upside you can see like this one down here that was that bottom over here and we moved to the upside we were below the 20 over here that was right about here and we moved to the upside so 
what do we take with all these indicators? Do we take it with a grain of salt? Do we know where Bitcoin is going to be going? Well, there's a couple of reasons why I'm not sure. I, I really don't know. And Bitcoin is really stumping me right now because I have so many mixed feelings about it. We have so many institutional buying. There's no OTC market at all, over-the-counter buying. Um, the only kind of Bitcoin you can get is on the exchanges. And we're running out of supply. We're running out of supply. There's maybe about 10% supply left within the entire world. So I do, I don't, I'm not bearish on Bitcoin at all, but it's possible that we could see some movements to the downside. If you stayed throughout this entire video, good for you because this is going to be the most important part. Hit that like button if you're enjoying this content. Hit that subscribe button if you are new, as we do like to do our live streams. Uh, tonight we're going to be doing a live stream. It's going to be starting at 4 o'clock p.m. Mountain Standard Time. If you want to come take a look at a coin, you want me to do a TA on it, come into that live stream and come ask me. Okay, so Bitcoin was holding this support back here. You can see we had support, 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 and just recently we broke down. We broke down out of that support and we're coming back up and we're going to test it for support of uh, tested as resistance. That is a line that I'm going to be looking for to see if we can get breaking above. So it's possible we could be seeing Bitcoin coming down, hitting that support that we have over here and coming back up before we get rejected. If we get rejected at that line over there, I'm going to be looking for further downside. I will be looking for our supports. I have support over here at $52,600, $51,700. And then also forty nine thousand four hundred dollars, and you're probably wondering, well, Leland, you have you have two different colored lines here. You have a blue line and a red line. Yes, this target right here was out of this triangle that we had. So I took the measure distance from here all the way up here, and I moved it, and that is the target that I got down here. But also, I have a different scenario. Let's say that that wasn't a uh, an, a, an asymmetrical triangle that gave us a breakdown target over here to $48,000. What if it was some kind of bull flag? And then that's what that target, or that's what that target is up here. I had some kind of bull flag. It's very possible that we could be in a bull flag right now. I'm going to be looking for a breakout to the upside, but we might be putting in something kind of like maybe that right there, which we have some of this 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 flag like looking pattern maybe possible it's a scenario and this is what you do in ta you try to figure out what kind of patterns are we putting in what kind of ta are you going to do to give us these suggested breakout targets um so all i did was i took the measure distance from here all the way down to the base and i took that to the breakout point and i guessed and it was going to be about right about there that breakout target would take us all the way up to seventy seven thousand dollars which in retrospect is going to be taking us above the two year times five moving average. And if we go over to a weekly charts, you can see that this has been acting as resistance for us in the past. And if you've watched my videos in the past, you already know that in the last bull run 2017, we used that two year times five moving average as resistance multiple times. And it took weeks. It took weeks, if not months to try to get above it. And when we did get above it, we were only above it for a couple of months. And that's when we hit our market cycle top. I don't think this is the top. This is definitely not the top. Although we do have our pie cycle moving in very closely, we have we still have a lot of room. We have a lot of room to be moving to the upside. So you can see that we've just begun trying to break through that two year times five moving average. So, and that's why I said getting above that 70 to 75 or the 68, excuse me, 68,000 to $70,000 level is going to be critical because if we can come up and hit this target of $77,000 that will be putting us above that two year times five moving average, which then we can start probably saying that we'll be turning that into support and be moving much higher. And I think that's when the super cycle is going to start beginning. Technically, we are in a super cycle right now. We are coming back and we are testing our support before we have this liftoff. There's so much time. There's so much time left until we have our market cycle top. It's looking good. It's looking good overall. We might be a little bit bearish in the short term, and that might have a negative effect on alts, but if you guys are here for the long term, if you're here for a year, two years, five years, you have nothing to worry about. You have absolutely nothing to worry about. This is the long game. If you wanna be successful within crypto, you need to hodl, and they don't just say that for no reason. You buy and you hold for a long time. Don't think about selling. Don't look at the markets. Don't read the news. It's all noise. It's all noise. It's all about the TA. It's all about the TA. And if you guys like this video, 
hit that like button. I know I've said it a bunch of times. Hit that subscribe button if you are new. We're doing a live stream tonight at 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. If you guys want to come in and check it out, you want to see different coins. A lot of people are requesting coins on the channel. You'll be able to see these TAs are going to be free for you guys, for whoever just wants to watch. Uh, um, it is a $10 minimum contribution to see those TAs. Come join us. Invest in yourself. Get a TA. Find out where we're going to be going. We're hitting our targets. Whether it's to the downside or to the upside, we're hitting our supports and we're hitting our resistances. My name's Leland. And remember, it's all about the TA. I'll catch you guys in the next one.